Son, you decided... If you're still watching this, you just got through like an hour and a half of trauma. What are you talking about? Yeah, so kudos to you, and Battle we're Trump. sorry. And welcome back to another Linux GameCast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how-tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. This week, Golf with Friends has traveled to outer space, and it sucks, and it blows. More about that in GE. Not only does it bring good things to life, well, it does that, and somehow we're going to talk about Proton. Just, just roll with it, roll with it. Steam Labs has a new update. For the love of God, please buy something, Gabe. It's starving. <laughs> and Baba is you? No, Baba is GNU. Well, Zedlib, shut up. <laughs> the Steam Library beta is coming. Six whole days before the summer time frame that they had previously mentioned. And Valve didn't mean it like that, you guys. Not that anyone outside of the quote-unquote aggrieved party uh, actually saw it that way. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'm old man Ven here at LGC Actual, switching the bits, doing the nightmare fuel all under Linux, and joined every single week except for last week is the goddamn <laughs> sexual Tyrannosaurus Rex himself. That is one Jordan's fang. My Go arms are very short. I was going to play the extinction <laughs> angle, but either way, and the <laughs> dulcet toy uh, toins. From Britannia, the man on the island, one Pedro Mateus, <laughs> together with you in Hello. Chat Realm Dynamic, live, helping us form Cocaine Voltron. Fuck it, YouTube. We're about done with you. Um, okay, that was all the radio voice I had. Uh, what's up, guys? Jordan, you're back from a um, concert. Yeah, there. There, 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 there was a thing involving some demons and a wizard and <laughs> a mock going. And it was, it, was, it was fun. Yeah, no, it, uh, Demons and Wizards was touring for like the first time since... I think literally 2000. Um, so uh, they had one stop in Toronto, and I went and saw it, and it was pretty good. I got a t-shirt with uh, with a demon and a wizard on it, and a skull with some people getting crucified on the back of it, so I can't wear it in public. Oh, well, uh -huh. <laughs> you Hey, you could wear it the next time you go to a wedding. This is true. Mm. Yep. Pedro? <laughs> and over here, well, I got it into my head that I... I need to build some manner of Steam Box until I can get the Steam Box 360 up to a point uh, that I'm happy with. No, dude, with. dude, they, they straight up put like a, a restraining order on you in the UK. They're like, no more laptops, dude. <laughs> so I I have an Optiplex motherboard that came with 16 gigs of RAM and an i5-3470 for 30 pounds on eBay. So Man. this will become a... Steam box of sorts you can at some point. <laughs> what, what does it taste There's like? There's a lot of room here. Yeah, is, <laughs> I've thought about that. It's just like I don't have enough spacing. Oh, man. Uh, I could probably do that. <laughs> everyone, let's see. What I've been up to a couple of things. Uh, one of like the long-running goals since we started, like, okay, let's get this thing more lined up with a system here at the studio. It's like we want to put on a fourth person to fill that fourth gaping hole we have. And we, the, um, I lucked out. I went on eBay. I've talked about this on the Wednesday show. It's like, ah, there's a black magic. It's like the previous generation black magic card for like $40. It's like, do we gamble on it? It's like 40 bucks, whatever. If it doesn't work, I'll throw it away. Turned out it worked. So now that I'm like a spare encoder, I think we got away. We might play around with it in the after shows. And so the, we can bring back the, Hey, and we can also do interviews. So we're, we're going to start bugging developers. That's going to be fun. We're going to have a good time. And, uh, another thing going to be giving away a game. We're going to be giving a game away, a game every single week until I run out of like the 19 pages I have on humble, but you got to work for it. Um, we're, we're going to make it hidden things. I'll drop the big one during our plug segment at the news. That'll be your first one because we're going to take the keys and there's going to be one part of the key, one place, one part of another, one part of another. So all you have to do is watch the show. You can get a free game or not. It's like an it's like an awful scavenger hunt. It it is the <laughs> not the most dick way I could come up with. To be perfectly honest, that was like the most <laughs> dick, but still like all right. Yeah, I, I I'm thinking of like okay, now we got to like. Base 64 encode the chunks and then hide them in like a web page source somewhere. And... Dude, like what the eyes is like, oh, we could ob obfuscate uh, like a couple of letters. Like, that's just being mean, man. This is being yeah. mean. So, this is like a review. It's like, you watch it, you'll see them. They'll pop up. It'll like pop up on the screen. 
one might be actually one is hidden, but I'm not going to take away. And last but oh. not least, a little bit of house cleaning. Um, we're probably, if everything is going to run smooth the next week, we're going to be switching our live streaming over to from whence we came to Twitch. Yeah. <laughs> so I might be angry at YouTube right now. Things could change, but just be prepared for that. Um, he, he needs about a week to stew on it. Yeah, that, that's kind of where we're at right now. Um, but for most of you, which is the vast majority, you're like, shut up, man, I'm driving to work on a Monday. I will, because we need to talk about the horse. The horse is stewing in its own juices, some rage juices. It's the steam! Litter! Oh. The oh. week! Yay! Change, hey, change finally. is difficult, and I hate it. <laughs> A tree fitting. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, no, I've actually been looking forward to this one ever since they announced it. It's, it's the new uh, Steam Library beta. It's finally starting uh, on September 17th. And they did say when they first announced it, it's like, oh yeah, the beta is going to drop in the summer 2019. Yeah, that's six days. Just six whole days before the uh, the summer is over. But all I'm, all it is I'm coming. He, dude, all I'm hearing is that it's going to be Tomb Raider. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but no, I'm actually super looking forward to this one because the Steam library uh, page, basically, since it was implemented, it has looked the same. So it's good to finally have something different and something that gives you a bit more um, control, let's call it that, uh, over how you want to sort your games. Because if you've ever tried to create a Steam collection before... Chances are you probably uh, found that an update came along and all of a sudden your collections were just gone because Valve don't give a damn. But they are putting a big emphasis on the new collections and uh, they are going to give you like all the news and the new stuff uh, that's happening about the games. You can see that directly from the library page without having to go through the community hub or through somewhere else. You, everything is there and that's useful <laughs> i think it's pretty neat man uh this is for me this has been promised for so long by the time it gets around to showing i'm like okay <laughs> i mean i i've learned to live with the i kind of like the spartan look of i don't like the jank oven but you know having all those <laughs> options like you know discussions news and updates like right there instead of having to go through the little thing of links oh, i'm down with that jordan I mean, I mean, definitely for it'll probably be a little better for like the high DPI mode stuff, which kind of looks like crap. I don't know. I only use like the leftmost pane, um, and it like based on the screenshots, it it looks fine. I guarantee that my reaction is going to be very typical to most people, in that I'll hate it for about a week, and then I'll just get over it, and then that's just going to be I'll just get used to it. Um. I mean, the, so the the other thing, too, is they're trying to, like, make the library page a bit of, like, a Facebook profile for the game, which could be good for engagement if they're, because they're really trying to emphasize, and we'll, we'll get into that in a couple other stories, <laughs> uh, the whole developer relationship with the gamer thing, and this is probably, like, a way to do it that's e easy enough to implement and ingest. I don't know. I don't know where I stand in the majority or minority, but I'm like, is there a button in there to play the game? Get, get, all right, do whatever you want. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you just right click on the name on the, on the tray left pane. icon. Yeah, yeah. That, that, <laughs> so, that, that basically what it boils down to. Okay, updates in the lab. What's on the slide? Yeah. I mean, uh, now now I have this mental image of like Gaben in like Frankenfurter costume, and I'm immensely turned on. <laughs> Gaben. Um, yeah, so uh, <laughs> more, more micro tra trailers. They have them for every game now. Um, Yay. you can also, uh, you can also, uh, modify your search based on, uh, not just, uh, not just, uh, operating system and whatnot, but user tags now, which is something I'd actually like to see them add to the library functionality. Cause it would be great to be able to search for like multiplayer games and then just see what you can play with your friends. Yeah. That would, that would, I like the narrow by nice. price. They should have like Monday versus payday, just like two yeah. check boxes. Yeah. They also have a thing for filtering, uh, whether, uh, it's on sale or not. Uh, and they have a uh, deep dive thing uh, where I guess it'll it'll just it'll just show like player uh, player usage and whatnot. I don't Maybe. I don't know. No, uh, it, the it, deep it, dive it, thing it's basically lets you find games that are similar to the ones you have or similar to a specific game that you want to do a deep dive on, like branch off of that. And while I was reading that, it's like, doesn't it already? 
do that? When you scroll down to the bottom of the page on Steam, it gives you more games like this. I, I guess now it's a button that you can press. Um, I don't know. The, the more thought I put into this is like, you're just trying to sell me more shit. Uh, yeah. Like, I understand taking that. away all their games. Well, this is what I'm saying. <laughs> I don't get terribly excited about that. But GE brings things to life, including Proton. We're talking about Proton 415-GE-1. What is that? I've never heard of it. From Glorious Egg Roll. Um, it's a new hotness based on a 415. And that's one staging raw input pitch. That mouse coordinates VKD3D has been added so you can get like permaband for messing around with that. Don't use it with Tomb Raider because it'll <laughs> trigger the uh, Denu Denuvo. Yeah. 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 That hot mess. But it's got patches for a bunch of games that I personally don't play. Uh, I tried it, installed it. Pretty easy to install. There's not much to it. There's uh, links to all this in our show notes. Uh, on the GitHub page, still no goddamn Batman. Can't play my Arkham Knight. And man, I wish somebody would like release something that would allow me to play it. I'm just trying to see if Strider's paying attention. Um, <laughs> I did notice this, Jordan. The uh, Vesera cleanup crew now works ah. on Proton, and it's got multiplayer. We might fuck around with that. Yeah, it also has like Shadow Warrior levels, which is pretty fun. You get to clean up after your Wang. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, but I mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the show title. Uh, releasing uh, Proton patches or rebasing uh, Proton uh, patches on like the latest wine staging is a bit of a brave mood, but if Glorious Egg Roll is willing to take that on, um, good good for him. Uh, like like Vin said, you're not going to be able to get through this through Steam. You can add custom Proton versions and runners via Steam mm -hmm. already, so you're going to have to build this yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, you may need to do that thing. I don't. I don't know. Do you have to do this thing where um, no, you have to ships, build first the? First of all, uh, I mean, it ships binaries, so yeah, okay, you can yeah. just, you just drop the binaries it, into in, a specific yeah. folder okay, on okay, Steam, okay. and, and it shows up in runner. your drop down. You know, when yeah. you like force it to use a particular version. Yeah, because uh, they're 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 saying with like one of the past Proton updates that they're um, compiling wine libraries as DLLs using Windows, so that mm -hmm. to try and make uh, easy anti cheat not false flag it too much. I guess so. Mm. If, they, if they're already doing it, then that shouldn't be too bad. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, but uh, proper Proton is uh, also uh, doing that. It's just that this one is based on a newer version of Wine. And it may just be enough, especially if you're playing like a Media Foundation uh, middleware-enabled game, like your Monster Hunter Worlds or any of the other tons of games that have uh, cropped up recently that use that particular bit of middleware. That means now you can actually see the cutscenes and everything else that the game has to offer because those were previously not working. But yeah, easy anti-cheat really is the big one, at least for me, because there's a bunch of games out there that I really want to try, but they're multiplayer only and you need to be able to run easy anti-cheat, otherwise the game just goes... That that's going to be yeah. an interesting thing. Um, <laughs> Valve time for that one, I'm sure. You know, even Valve's came out and they're like, "Hey, man, we're, we're working on this," and everyone's went. But before the eventual heat death, where Valve shut up, I'm like, ah, <laughs> all right, <laughs> fine. But hey, man, Valve, Valve, sorry, Pedro. Yeah, they're very sorry, you guys. Uh, they they're totally sorry. They didn't mean it like a lightning rod. Uh, no. Well, uh, thing is, you may remember when um. Metro Exodus went um, Epic exclusive about a week before launch. Uh, Steam put a little notice uh, on the Steam store saying it's like, we think this is unfair, uh, not giving us, you know, the proper heads up in due time and just going for a competing uh, thing without letting people know. And there's already a bunch of people who had pre-ordered the game. And they put a link to that there uh, because that was like the first big one uh, that, uh, well, it was the one that kind of started the whole Epic A Train thing. Mm -hmm. And Kotaku originally um, got in touch with uh, one of the developers at Valve uh, and he said, P PC we, Gamer, not Kotaku. Uh, the, the articles from PC Gamer, uh, the original one was kotaku who got in oh, touch yeah. with him. Nathaniel. oh yeah nathaniel look yeah. at pedro reading articles Ooh. yes <laughs> but yeah uh the article for pc gamer here actually does a pretty good job of summing it up it, yeah well, we uh valve uh got in touch with the um 
or Kotaku got in touch with Valve and they said, uh, yeah, we didn't mean that as uh, like a lightning rod for all the hate uh, that uh, Dude, basically transpired come on, man. after it's epic. that. It's not like they needed help. Yeah. No. I mean, I think this is a little <laughs> no, arrogant on Valve's part to be like, oh, well, we had it was like, man, this, this problem took care of itself. Epic. I mean, not epic. Valve, y you might have added a bit of p petrol to the fire, but yeah, calm down, Bill yeah. Joel. Calm down. Yeah, the, the the response itself was already pretty diplomatic. It's basically saying it's unfair to you know delist uh, an item from the store after people have pre-ordered. Again, don't pre-order people. I don't know how many times we have to say this, but no one apparently learns. Dude, don't Valve handled that like angels because there would be like the kindest thing if I was doing that outside of like i a I'd bring back the blink tag that just said get fucked. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. followed by the description of where the game went, but I think Valve, far more classy than that. So, good on them. Uh, do we have some yeah. game updates we need to talk about this week? Yeah, mm -hmm. if you're going the distance. Dun -dun, dun -dun, dun -dun. <laughs> They've already changed a lot of the uh, pages now. You know, we're kind of getting that new feel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and all that. This is Distance 1.4, the Horizon update. So that's some new hotness, and an error occurred, so we can't play it. Ha! Deal with that, YouTube. Um, Couple of new levels, uh, Liminal, Certainty, Zenith, and a gang of community levels. That's the thing that was introduced when they hit the one point not release online menu improvements and main menu improvements and some stuff to the level editor. All of which I didn't get a chance to play around with because it still got the bug that was present on the 1.0 release when we threw the glorious chairs at it. When it starts up between two monitors, it's a Unity game. This is solved in Unity, by the way opens between two monitors and has seizure-tastic robot blue blinky time until you four-scale it. Which you can fix. You can go into the config file and, da -da 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 and it's like, I, I don't care enough, guys. Refresh. <laughs> so fix that. <laughs> like, to review the game, I would go through the extra steps. That, I'm like, yeah, whatever. Uninstall. That's where I'm at. Yeah, it, it's it's distance. I was actually happy to see that they introduced, like, what was it, 27 new levels or something like that? Mm-hmm. Well, a lot so, of them are community, so yeah, yeah, those very, very much uh, it's very in quality, quality. Yeah, but I'm happy to have more. And if they are it's like, okay, it, we have some new levels. We've gone through these. We've vetted these. So these we feel are good enough, and I'm okay with that. I'm always looking for new uh, levels and distance, and it's good to see them. Mm. Good yeah. times. Uh, Jordan, your favorite game has got an update. We played a little <laughs> oh, bit of that yay. last night. Um, ah. Golf with fiends, golf with your friends. I don't mind it. I think it's fun. It's a great little fuck around game. I couldn't imagine playing it in forever alone mode. But they got a new hut, hut level in space. And it's all bullshit. I mean, you got like black holes and like suction tube, Jeffrey tube. and Are, are, are there space balls? Dude, uh, you can end up with space balls, man. You, you got to keep your space balls warm, man. You don't you don't want space gangrene. That could be a terrible, terrible thing if you don't send us pictures if you have it. Um, it runs yes. fine. Most of the levels are reasonably performing. You crank everything to 11. And uh, online multiplayer. It is a fuck you, screwy game with weird physics that you can... You can go full metal if you stick around for the after shows and with us when we just go crazy with Rocket League and just start compiling mutators. Turns out you can do that. And like it, it just went immediately downhill when I was like, wait a minute, there's mutators? What? <laughs> then we had okay. You can turn collision on. That gets interesting. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> or is, 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 is there is there a mutator to like actually play golf as a rocket league car? No. How, how about one to just fire yourself out of an airlock because you'd rather not play it? Oh, that's on the second level. Nice. Yeah. So it's a new map. Go check it out if you want. It is, I think, everyone's favorite perpetually in early access game. Unfortunately. Oh, speaking yeah. of which, if you go to the store page and you read the bit. Uh, that says, uh, how long uh, will you be in early access for? And it's like, we initially stayed at the end of 2016. Uh-huh. But we underestimated the time we needed. We think around mid to late 29... Oh, they added the too late. Damn it! Because mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so, when so, I so, checked it earlier right. in the week, it just said mid-2019. <laughs> to their credit, <laughs> Pedro, this thing runs on Linux kernel 3.2 OS. So, 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 so. 
<laughs> set seven. I, here, here's the real question, though: Is like, what, no, what's no. going to hit 1.0 first? Open Morrowind or this? Morrowind. Yeah, open yeah. MW. Uh, the apparently the next big release is going to introduce Shadow, so that's done. <laughs> right. No, no, no. What will they have to procrastinate on later? Online multiplayer? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, that's okay. coming. Okay. Uh, a new game has come to uh, Michael, Foxy and the Gent. Send it over in our show notes. Uh, yeah. about ship your ships. Yes, it's about uh, shipping your ship somewhere that you will never remember them because it's time to abandon ship. And it's out now nice. for Mac and Linux. And uh, they did say, it's like, Linux players may be interested that while we focused on our testing on Ubuntu uh, 1804, ah, no uh, we had reports from so, people that have run the game perfectly on other I hate uh, Linux operating you, systems. Pedro, hmm? fuck you, Valve. Get rid of that. No one watches it. <laughs> <laughs> the, the auto the auto yeah, playing trailer that, the, yeah no not even no the live the worst oh. the, the worst oh, one. Yeah. The, the thing at the top Quit. at least it doesn't spawn that stupid window that follows you around you, you launched a video streaming service you forgot about it for four years let's leave it at that quit trying to bring it mm -hmm. back let it let it let it stay dead you lost that one Next week, Linux Gamecast exclusively via Steam streaming. <laughs> Shit, but yeah, if son. they are uh, <laughs> actually testing abandoned ship on uh, 1804 and they're doing a good job of keeping it up to date along with the Windows version, I'm totally okay with that. Yeah, mm -hmm. and this this is this is we we talked about this a few weeks ago too uh, when they were talking about uh, getting ready for their release for uh, Mac and Linux. Uh, but mm -hmm. this one, this is one I've been keeping my eye on because it has a very, very distinct aesthetic style trying to be like an oil painting. Plus it has the sort of, it, it, it experiments with failure states in a way that I find interesting in that as long as your captain is alive, you can always build a new mm -hmm. ship and start from scratch. Mm -hmm. You don't have to just completely restart the game, which is which is something I really want to try. Not for $30 for an early access though, but that, maybe. Uh, when you walk into the, you, if you make it past the mixed reviews, then you get down to the 30 bucks and you're like, oh, then you get to the early access. And you're like, yeah. yeah but, <laughs> but I'll wait. I'll I'm, just I'm, wait. I'm, I'm, I'm going to treat this like I did Valsil. Yeah, I, just, I mean, wait, unless wait you're like sailing in your wooden ship and you're like, this is my thing, man. And whatever. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you're, you're, on, you're on the space internet on your like actual wooden galley right. that you're sailing. <laughs> exactly. Just like sails blown out, and you're like, ah, and you're hopping around because you have one of your legs on, on, on your peg legs. <laughs> yeah, your, your teeth are missing because you <laughs> have scurvy, with your hooks, and there's like man. a parrot on your shoulder. You, you, yeah. you got sausages tied to your hooks, so you're gonna use your. <laughs> yeah, man. Two. Hey, we need to. Never mind. Laser vision. La not laser vision. Laser vision. I keep making that mistake too. Uh, but it is. Uh, it is out. You can buy it for about ten bucks. It's available on Linux. Which is why we're talking about it. It's basically asteroids with like more funky colors and character blindness and visual effects. Mm -hmm. um, Wait, yeah, because so look, look, look at that. that what would happen if I played asteroids with a retro term? Uh, you'd play uh, it, it would have terminal? less colors. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I guess. Um, it, it also apparently has a plot, and it does that thing where <laughs> the music changes based on your gameplay. Asteroids doesn't have a plot. Asteroids is just there are rocks. Shoot the rocks. Yay. Um, Controller-wise, apparently, they make it very, very clear that only the dual Spock is supported. Mm. But, you know, you may have luck via Steam input. Um, that said, um, yeah, it's it's basically just like a modern-designed Asteroids, and it, it kind of does, like, the CRT effect a little bit. It has, yep. like, the, 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 what is it, the, the vector Spectrix. Vector graphics. Yeah, the, mm -hmm. it's vector, the, the grid the, from, yeah. Yeah. I'm, okay. I'm, try, I'm trying to remember the specific console that, like, first did it. Vectrix. It was, like, the all, yeah, the Vectrix, yeah. Yeah. No. The all the all in one. Get off uh, the lawn. <laughs> I I don't have a lawn. I I need to borrow yours. No, you poop on but, it. Yeah, but uh, un unlike the previous game, it it is reasonably priced to sell at about ten bucks. You need the fertilizer. So uh, uh, it does. Uh, one of the requirements for Linux is you will need a card with the DX12 or Vulcan. So this is yes. Vulcan. <gasps> Hmm. That is an that is an interesting question um, because on the minimum system requirements it says DX11 or greater. greater. So it, it's proton. <laughs> they're, they're just using they're just using proton for the DirectX shit and everything else also, is native. They say any Linux OS. Challenge accepted. Yeah. <laughs> All right. It's it's not running on Debian two. You liars! I'm gonna I want play my money on back. Android. <laughs> All right, coming up next. Oh my God, Nvidia still hates Linux. That's why they're 
still fixing issues on their Linux driver. Don't go away just yet. The news are coming right around the corner. Where's my free game? Run! Run! Before we get to that, nope. Ven's going to tell you about how um, you can find the hidden pieces uh, to uh, getting yourself to free I'm not going to do that. Here, watch. <laughs> boom. <laughs> boom. Boom. Right <laughs> there. Nope. Pedro's, Pedro's nope. right. No idea. The, the keys, <laughs> one of the keys just showed up. Well, like a part of the keys just showed up. So, ha. Ha. Oh, Second, man. Jordan. Interrupting Vin. Move. <laughs> Moo! All right. Well, if you if, if if you if you want to further milk our our I don't know information teats nope, for wait, more I'm sustenance, you can head on over to linuxgamecast.com. We got a support menu that you can like drop down and you click can on finance some stuff. this nightmare train. Check it out. We got you Patreon, absolutely... Labor Pay, Merch, PayPal, Wishlist, Bitcoin, all that fun stuff. Yeah, baby. but you can also head on over to patreon.com/slash Linux Gamecast. Linux That's where all the cool game... stuff oh. is. Linux what? Gamecast. Linux Game. Do not type. Wait, somebody tip that in. Linux um, cake cast. Do it. <laughs> Linux cocky cast. All right. Yeah, but you can get some cool stuff by being a Patreon, like access to the Discord channel or show note access, or you can RSVP when we do game streams and we support a bunch of multiplayer games. We can bring you guys in and you can play with us. It well, the pre pre super shows, and um, you can hang oh, out yeah. an hour. If you like this nonsense for some weird reason, if you're flawed like us and you're like, hey, man, we do an entire show an hour before this live that you're welcome to come hang out with us in discord and uh say you're being dumb live it's awesome yeah people people can actually yeah. talk during the free super shows and no. no one does though nope no no one ever you you could you could be the first there's a name for these people intelligent <laughs> they know better yeah and, they got and better indeed. stuff to, they're watching paint dry jordan <laughs> so so it's probably something more entertaining than this yeah they, um, don't, they don't feel like multitasking hey we got merch that stuff's awesome we get a little cut from that we got wish zones if you, you want got an to Amazon up, store. We, we do have an Amazon store with all the stuff we have in the studio. Jordan has got interesting things on his wish list, so you can torture him. Pedro has yeah. reasonable stuff, on, and you're like, I, I, I could see that. Maybe I'll get you a thing. Actually, Pedro, you got something. For, Jill's got a wish list thing, too. Pedro bought yes. one for... Man, you're not allowed to divide by zero. <laughs> I bought one for Jill because it's like, okay, you want that Chinesium controller? You get that Chinesium <laughs> controller there. <laughs> That's wrong. We're not allowed to buy each each other things from our wish list. By the way, the <laughs> Nick Cage poster might have been sold out when I went to get it for you. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Uh, you, you, you can't you can't get uh, twenty dollar portraits of the queen in Canada either, so I can't put that on the wish list either. That's miserable. Um, man. But yeah, no. If if you get some stuff off our wish list, you get to join uh, Frank's Fucko friends, right? Name in the credits. Yeah, look all at, that fun stuff. Yeah. There's one spot left. That's every every fine upstanding cannibal that has helped put together this studio, and uh, we get to show off what Linux can do. And we like to think maybe not content wise we do that, but te technologically. Yeah, it, it, yeah. It, it's very good looking. It's very good sounding. But what it sounds like is complete right, budget. right. If you can power through us being on it, you know, it's kind of like vinyl record, right? I mean, it's like, it's, it's listen to the warmth of it, not the actual. In, <laughs> indeed. But yeah, no, go, go to store.linuxgamecast.com, buy yourself a t-shirt or a sticker or a mouse pad or stick it on some people. Or stick and, it on your dog. Oh, and or have just... fun hunting the other two parts of that keys. Falcon indeed. drivers. Don't want to. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> they're They're out. You can, you can download them. No, I you guess. can. Uh, check this out, man. The only reason I want to bring this up, we're talking about the Vulcan beta drivers. Uh, you might think, you know, these are the ones that you want to have installed if you're playing around with the latest and greatest for Vulcan technology. That's right. Get your Spock on, people. September 6th. Uh, this deserves a mention because NVIDIA has fixed a bug that was causing corruption with the following DXVK titles. The Direct X to Vulcan for Linux thing. Saints Row and what's this, Saints Row four and the third. Yeah. Three three and four. Yep. So what have they done to my <laughs> Linus? Talk to me. <laughs> well, I mean... that is still valid because it's still a very proprietary driver. Yeah. They still they still have to do some wacky stuff to get a shim. <laughs> you know compiled every time it, it would be nice to just ingest things from mesa even though that kind of moves at a bit of a glacial rate if you don't feel like building it from git if we do want to mm -hmm. roll it back isn't it a little bizarre world like even if we didn't have predisposed hatred towards nvidia or whatever that they're, they're fixing something with proton effectively well dxvk but people yeah. when it, you're thinking it, about it. 
it goes back to that whole thing um uh where you know actually actually fixing issues will shore up the code base itself in a in a more effective way right mm -hmm. if they can yeah. identify these recurring issues that are occurring in this particular implementation of vulcan and much much like with uh, them fixing open gel bugs in wine right there's a lot they do a lot of weird shit in the in the dxvk project this is right what i was going to bring up as part two of that and like how many times do you think you've ran into like that breaks all the bullshit we've done to work around it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, it, exa exactly. So fixing fixing these implementations will improve Nvidia's Vulkan implementation as a whole, which you know, we'll we'll put, remember that cuz we'll get to that near the end of this news segment when we talk so, about a specific Twitter. Are we thread. going to be able to dial it down from like fuck you Nvidia to like maybe like frell you Nvidia or frack you Nvidia? <laughs> Zarquan fork yeah. you Nvidia. Fork you Nvidia. Oh, <laughs> hot. All right. Uh, um, they, they tried doing that. It's called Nuvo and it doesn't work. Hey, oh. Peanut butter <laughs> bundles. Yeah. It's the humble RPG bundle. Uh, you can click, you should click on the link in our show notes because that uses our affiliate link, which gives us a bit Just of Just click on one of the affiliate links on our website. That's right. Make it rain, yeah. baby. Yeah. You thought the plugs were over? They're not. No. Yeah. Uh, but you can, uh, for about uh, 582 Canadian, 440 US, you can grab uh, Tyranny and Pillars of Eternity. The first one, not the second one, but they're still both pretty decent games. If you're a big mm -hmm. fan of the, uh, if you long for the days of isometric grid-based RPGs like Baldur's Gate, there, you, there you go. Uh, Tyr Tyranny involves a lot more talking, and it's a lot more visual novelty with like some combat stuff filtered in there. Uh, but Pillars of Eternity will kick your ass um, if you want a really challenging RPG. So you the five dudes, the five yeah. dudes will kick no, your ass. No, you go into a room and there are five and you, dudes you there, and you don't. You have a bad time. Put the and you the walls, and yeah, I remember those times, man. Uh, Tyranny, you've streamed a bit of that hot mess, and it, yeah. looked, it looked kind of interesting. I think I might pick it up. Well, I'm going to pick it up anyway, regardless. Uh, outside of that, I mean, I laughed when I got down to the bottom because, you know, there's oh, always yeah. like the YOLO unlock and like $15 for border. La I'm like, wow, $20, that was 20 the first Canadian one. for border. The first one the that doesn't even the worst the one, first too. one, the one that is usually around $10 on Steam because the it goes on sale. 360 days of the year it, it, uh, it, it's been on sale for like three quid more than once man yeah <laughs> so yeah no one is paying those uh 15 so yeah it means that if you pay more than the average like jordan mentioned it's uh currently four dollars and 40 cents or three pounds 57 over here so yeah no just get it just mm -hmm. mirror mirror was trying to get my attention towards uh, deep sky derelicts <laughs> which is at the one dollar level which is supposedly like a sci-fi darkest dungeon, which I'm for for a buck, I, I'm willing to take that plunge. That might so, be worth yeah. a Pepsi challenge. <laughs> Man, all right, we gotta talk about the mascot that's no longer a bug. He's grown a human body, but he still looks like he got cut masturbating, man. <laughs> a little bit. It, 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 look, look, someone look is that taking face. him to task for that. that, that that's a uh, face that says kill me. Nope. That that, kill that dude me. is like, all right, give give me that thing you were masturbating with. I'm gonna stab it. That's why he says his eyes are all bugged out. He's like, oh no. What do you see when you look at this? Oh God, stop it. <laughs> but yeah, it's his. Uh, this is Godot, and Godot it's grown into a reasonably sized project, and as. A lot of projects that start out really small and then grow to be reasonably sized, they tend to attract a lot of ideas people. People who have ideas uh, of how other people should do their thing. Well, uh, Godot's got a lot of that and they've had enough. Hey, so they're creating... Hmm? You know how to work on computer stuff, right? Uh, yes? Bro, I got an app idea. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're a programmer, right? <laughs> you, 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 you need to take the bong rip before that, though. That that's how it makes that's how it becomes truly authentic. You know that doesn't. Uh, I'm just saying, maybe a little cocaine confidence gets the business minded people <laughs> like bro. Bro. Yeah, bro, let's bro, start bro. a business. They've had um, enough with people suggesting them and basically clogging up their uh, issue tracker that they have created a separate uh, repository for proposals. Do you have an idea that maybe would help uh, Godot? Go to the proposal repo and make your suggestion there. Don't clog up their issues. Mm. Because the issues are, you know, issues. <laughs> and the, the the other thing too is they're saying like they will just straight up 
decline pull requests if you have not gone through their approval process, which I think is a yep. good thing to do, especially now that Godot is becoming a more mature project. It's getting way more use. They can't just let the, they can't just take the kitchen sink approach anymore. They have to be yeah. a little more ca cautious about curating what they actually release. That's great. And that this is just a brilliant idea. It isn't brilliant. I mean, it's something that had to be done because you got to give <laughs> the idea people off the get ups. Yes. That, that, yeah. that will just bury you then, bro, bro. Come here, you, you know, I, that type of stuff. So also, I wanted to give a mention to Westnot because they're like, hey, by the way, progress on moving everything over to Godot is mm -hmm. almost done. And I was like, well, you should have told me in the first place, girlfriend. I would have said something before now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, apparently they're working on both the 1.0 version and uh, Godot as, uh, well, as of the right one, now. The, the, the one point go version. Yeah. Well, yes. speak, <laughs> speak, speaking of games built on ancient technology, mm. um, if you're if you're not supporting us via Patreon, perhaps you should consider supporting Ryan C. Gordon, aka yes. Sticky Butts, because he mm -hmm. does a lot of behind the scenes work to make games running under Linux a lot easier to accomplish. Um, and so he's he one of the one of the goals he put up on his Patreon was uh, a CL 1.2 compatibility. Uh, we are on this alert. Tried to put something like this together as well. Uh, but eff effectively, it's something to translate all the SDL 1. Point or 1.2 system calls to SDL 2, which is, you know, more modern, has better hardware support, doesn't cause your monitors to freak out if you have more than one plugged in and you start a game. <laughs> yeah, so uh, he put up a little Google Doc, uh, and he's looking for games that were using SDL 1.2 to use as a validation test for his project to make sure that they still run. Um, and right now, uh, like DOSBox and the original Neverwinter Nights originally come to mind. There's a bunch of humble games on the spreadsheet. You can take a look at that. The link uh, is through the tweet, which is in our show notes for however long Ryan decides to keep that up. But yeah, this this is good. Um, yeah, I remember yeah. Um, we bring up Picky Butts uh, for the Wednesday show. And we kind of brought that up. I've never seen such a thousand yard stare of no He's like, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember him specifically saying, I'm not going to do that. No one wants that. As it turns yet. out, if you dangle money in front of him, he'll do things. It, it's amazing how things It's like, oh, it turns out it costs money to do these things. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> TIL, actually, it does. But that's kind of brilliant. Uh, support, uh, he's done, you know, from way back, way back in the the T is. This is like TNG for Linux gaming, like the TOS back in 99, 2000 with the low key. It was like Linux gaming. It's because we were getting AAA titles in 99. And I was like, whoa, 2001. Is, we're done. We got, and bomb, bomb, that fell. So <laughs> this round two things kind of excited. I'm glad he's still part of it. Mm -hmm. yep. Warzone 2100. What is it? Never heard of it. Well, it's a little strategy game uh, that uh, is basically one of those games that the people who play it, uh, this is all they play. And as it turns out, it had been, according to the uh, the post by Per, one of the developers, uh, it's been three years since the last staple release. And so they put out a big chunky update that introduces a bunch of new stuff, fixes a bunch of crap, and it is pretty big uh and the first thing like there's only like two or three uh comments on that uh on that thread and like the very first one uh the game is broken now and mm -hmm. the second one yeah i can't play the game anymore <laughs> it's just like oh okay that didn't take very long then <laughs> oh come on man you're like <laughs> wait oh I, I i have to have a floating point cope what no man <laughs> Well, yeah, as it turns out, three years without a stable update, and the people who are playing on a previous stable version, all of a sudden, some of them are not able to play the game anymore. Mm. And yeah, it is one of those games that that's all some people play. <laughs> I, I, I like this one post at the end of the thread. Found a mistake. Structures unexpectedly disappear due to structure updates. That's a, <laughs> Can't trust that's a sentence. <laughs> Can't trust structures, dude. It's, it's this nasty business. So this next thing we're going to talk about, you know, there's always like a good way to learn to develop software is to start by imitation, you know, the sincerest form of flattery and all that. And it's a very common thing to see an open source remake, you know, somebody learning how to do it. This one, Jordan, is frighteningly close to well, the source the material. The source material is not that complex. This is open. Stylistically. Bother. 
Yes, stylistically <laughs> very similar. Um, this is this is Bobby U, uh, which is an open source clone of Baba Is You. It gets the open hexagon treatment, uh, which is ironic because we're throwing chairs at a Terry Kavanaugh game coming up next. But anyways, um, yeah, but Baba has no Steam Workshop integration. So if you want to actually have custom levels for Baba Is You, this is the way you go about it. It's made in love, um, or rather made with Love 2D. Um, it works. Um, and yeah, if it's 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 that same sort of programmy puzzle game that makes you feel like a complete and utter idiot, but then it also makes you feel semi intelligence intelligence once you finish it. Um, this is a wonderful, yeah. wonderfully, wonderfully sadistic dicky game because it starts off and you're like that, that, you know, like that, that. Go watch Jordan's playthrough of it if you just want to see. Like, you get to the point. Everyone gets to the point of like, oh fuck you. Siri, oh, that's how that works. Baba yeah. is wall. Baba is pain, baby. Um, I on Debian ten, I installed Love to Received Baba, and it's like, well, work not, not yeah, for you, over here in Solus Land, it yeah. throws an exception and it doesn't run. But I'm pretty sure that's the fault of Solus. Yes, <laughs> it's all Solus's faults. Glug glug glug. No, no, it's Jeez. at this point it's Pedro's fault because like after three weeks of like yeah this uh, yeah I, oh oh you it need... was a week and a half it's and been, I'm gonna I, take care of that starting tomorrow. I got two weeks of them, two solid now, shows. Of now this 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 is pod racing, dude. <laughs> yes, uh, and if you like the pod racing video game, what showed up for computers at the end and of the nineties and arcades. Uh, and the PlayStation, no, it wasn't the PlayStation, it was the N64. Yeah, that's the one. Uh, well, you may be kind of uh, interested to know that there is an effort to create an open source engine re-implementation for Star Wars Episode One Racer. And I very much liked this game back in the day. I very much look forward to being able to play it, being able to play it once more. And... The way that they're doing it, apparently they're taking the mono approach, as in you still need the Windows binary to run the game, which, I mean, if the team behind um, RVGL, the Revolt OpenGL uh, re-implementation, if they manage to sort that out and by just basically disassembling the um, the binary and then basically rebuilding it from there, what's stopping these folks from accomplishing the same thing. A fucking mouse is going to come in and kneecap you. <laughs> that may own all the intellectual rights and properties, man. This thing's not long for this world. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's right. Wine and open RTC 2 as a, um, a sort of uh, foundational reference for this game. Um, yeah, it doesn't make sense to me that, like, they're, they're using 32-bit emulation to... Launch the launch uh, an engine that runs the binary, strips out all the proprietary code, shims in their code, and then actually runs. It kind of seems like it defeats the purpose of making an engine re implementation. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you know, whatever. If I guess if it works, it works, and you still can had sex, pretend, man. I mean, <laughs> yeah, you, you, you can. It, you, it can still be pretty wizard if you if you believe in yourself. Yeah. So good on you, a lot, man. Uh, keep doing weird shit like that. That's always fun. Till Disney comes around. Hey, man. <laughs> More content for the show. Uh, and, classic yeah. war, not any, yeah. not, not war zero, but war one. War, just just war. Huh? What is it good for? War never um, changes. No, if, if uh, I mean it in in perfect time, because you know WoW Classic just came out and everyone's realizing how terrible WoW was when it came out in comparison to the modern game. That no, fixed they're not. A lot of no, the they're not. They're still in the fucking pretending phase of like this is no, they're, good. They're, they're, they're still in this. the line to go kill a boar yeah. to complete a mission. <laughs> yes. Um, no, but if if that's not hipster enough for you, how about uh, engine reimplementation of Warcraft One? Orcs versus humans. Um, it's on GitHub. You need the original assets, you know, as you do with most new uh, or engine reimplementations. But uh, yeah, one thing I do like though is they don't specifically call out that they have a Linux version. They have the Raspberry Pi version. Guess what operating system you're running on Raspberry Pi? I AIX. guarantee it's not. It's, yeah, you're running Windows Starter Edition. Windows, DOS. yeah. <laughs> Windows R. Wouldn't it be a yeah. like messed up thing to do? I wonder. If, uh, there has to be free DOS for Raspberry. Just like screw with somebody. Of course there is. That's yeah. free DOS oh, for everything. I'm pre yeah, I'm pretty sure you you can't. It's harder to find stuff that free DOS won't run on because yeah. it's it's DOS. 
Um, but yeah, they, they have a they have a bunch of stuff working. They have a big old to do list if you want to help contribute. Um, a lot of the stuff is already checked off. Um, I would say there may be about two thirds to fifty percent of the way done uh, completion, which is pretty cool. Um, I used to so... play these not I think like most people out of Warcraft two. Yeah, that was that, before that, your time. That was, that was I was DOS. young. I played oh, yeah. that. So I, I, I didn't like it, but I played that. I like Warcraft three. That one I liked very no, much. That that was for posers and hipsters, man. Warcraft yeah. two was for the That's hot business. That's where Dota came from. <laughs> where, where you I didn't needed, if you wanted to Thank play you multiplayer, for on, <laughs> if you want to play online multiplayer, you had to buy the game again for the Battle.net edition that Dude. could actually mm -hmm. support TCP/IP. Dial up. <laughs> it was a thing. It worked in DOS. I remember it had blimps, and it was just. It's a good thing to fuck around and play time. And this looks like, uh, you know, I've never played the original Warcraft. So, all right, right on. I'm down with it. Yeah, it, it's, it's probably going to be one of these things where it's like, oh, this is neat. Man, this game sucks. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. The, the nostalgia, man. That's why I'm just like, you know what? Nostalgia, nostalgia, is like whatever. I, I remember the dark, dark ages, the DOS ages. All right. So why do you use Linux? Or rather, why do you use Windows instead Dude, of Linux? We got to talk about this for a hot minute. <laughs> we do. Honestly, Pedro, we might have to spend all day Tuesday on your stream talking about this. <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> Send in uh, the best ones you find. Because Linus Tech Tips, they asked, why do you use Windows? What makes it? This has nothing to do other than just grab some fucking popcorn. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 this is yucks. There's uh, the, there there is a good post in there where it's like, um, Max because you know, or Max because uh, Windows has games, oh, Linux on, because on. I'm lazy, dude. The all right, right off the bat, average user does not want to go around and spend time reading documentations, <laughs> even though one should. Product has to give a seamless experience. Go fuck yourself. Uh. <laughs> so you're using Windows expecting a seamless experience? <laughs> Dude. This, this is Stockholm Syndrome, the Twitter thread. This is entertainment, great. man. This thing goes on for days. And oh, yeah. this is like excuses <laughs> to thread. Some of them cause me to laugh out loud. Like legit <laughs> um, for Katana. That's great. I play <laughs> in the uh, just fine on, hey, we got some Linux people chiming in. Uh, you know, some people stick it up for Proton, all that fun stuff. We get into threads, but I, I've just, I've had this thread like on TweetDeck watching it for the past couple mm -hmm. of days. There, there, it, there, there's some asshole. <laughs> there's some asshole. If you keep scrolling, you'll find another asshole. There, we, there, there we is. Is. No, there, There's another asshole. I use Windows at work because I don't have a say. Also, as long as Windows stays terrible, I'll always have a job, man. What? Th th thank you for that. taking the bait, Pedro, and then I've... <laughs> and, and, and Neon Jasonus Evangelion is in the thread too, trying to do da damage Look control. Interesting. Multitasking window manager is best on win. Man, go fuck yourself too. <laughs> no. Oh. Oh. Did, did you hear? Did you hear about this? Microsoft actually released an open source tiling Windows manager. I think that's why Stallman was there last week. Oh wow. Oh wow. Yeah. Um, easy. <laughs> e wait. Easy to robust OS is good, improving less expensive than Mac. Mo more user friendly. All right. We before we get out of here, we, we do have to. Linux, there's there's nothing to it. It's, you just don't know how to use it. That's all you have to say. And we can be friends. We it's can hug it out. We, we can different. finish fucking sentences. <laughs> um, that's fine. Just be like, hey, man, I don't know how to use it. I don't care to learn how to use it. That's fine. 100%. You know what? We'll go get a beer. Not a problem. But the, just... No, you got to read all the documentations. You got to open 16 command lines to install an had, NVIDIA driver after you recompiled your kernel sound. I had to go to page two on Google, and that is unacceptable. Linux is crap. You know, I'd be a, I'd be a little pissed. Man, you ever go to page two? You know you're fucking desperate if you click next on Google. You're like, no, come no, on. No, if you, have to go to, if you have to go to page two, your search query was wrong. You need to, you need to refine that. Yeah. Linux is this thing, man. I, I, I couldn't imagine running something that is most certainly backdoored by several state actors, governments, and actively spies on you. Like That's it does. why I run BOS. <laughs> uh, anyway, let's get out of here. Coming up next, we're going to roll the dice, don't think twice, and then get smooshed. Eat mice. Nom, 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 nom. <laughs> No, 
no reason to be ashamed of my body, Ven Stone. Anyways, wow. welcome back to the Chairquisition. This is where the accused must survive trial by Fedora, Solus, and Du Bois, and then, and only then, the question can be asked: Is it fun? This week we're taking a look at Dicey Dungeons by Terry Cavanaugh, maker of um, did it on his own engine. You can pick it up for about fifteen bucks. What is it? Become a walking, a giant walking die. And battle to the end of an ever-changing dungeon. Can you escape the cruel whims that of Lady Luck? That was almost a completely different game. I misread Dicky Dungeons. I was, like, <laughs> I, was, I was gonna make a Dicky Dungeons joke, but now I can't. Thanks a lot, Ven. Not a problem. You ruin, you ruin everything for LCC me. Cares. Uh, Terry sent us some keys, so thank you a lot, Terry. Um, let us begin. How, how, how did it run on Du Bois? Man, um, you would expect this to run great on Debian 10 on a thread record 1920X, 32 gigabytes of RAM, 2080 GTX, NVMe drives, all that fun stuff. And, well, you know what? Surprise! It did. 100%. Uh, no issues. It ran at 60. That was the options. Like, you want to run at 60? I'm like, yeah. It's like, good. That's what we have. The no options really in the game to adjust any graphical settings other than, do you like a window? I'm like, no. I was like, well, I do full screen too. So that's technically an option. I think uh, controls, you drag shit around where you dribble, you drop mice, but more than that in the fun section. I think it could really do with controller support. I probably could have put more time into it if this was more of a sit back. Ex I expected it to, you know, in 2019, <laughs> not slagging off on the game, but just like looking at it. I was like, yeah, that would make sense. I even grabbed the steam controller and I'm like, could I make you work? And it's like, fuck you. <laughs> so I, I played it. Played it the old ways, but yeah, clean, 100%. Uh, Bill of health with QA, so yeah, man, four chairs. Yeah, on uh, Fedora 30, 64-bit with the SM6700K, with the mitigation turned on, and the GTX 1080 Ti. Yeah, it, it, it launches. I press play, and it popped up a window. And yeah, it asks you right at the beginning, do you, do you want full screen or do you want window? Those, those are your two choices. It's like pick one. You but like, get... but here's the thing too is like everything is also like f low frame count loops so regardless of what you're playing it on it's probably gonna look fine yeah graphics you know they're cute little dice and monster people and blocks <laughs> you could probably have made this in powerpoint um and controls yeah you you, you, you move your mouse and you click on it I, I poked at the controller as well um I, I I can I can definitely see like the tactile elements, and I'll get to that a little bit more in the fun segment. But yeah, I mean, I, it, it, the lack of controller support doesn't really bug me. Uh, I'll give it four chairs. Yeah, and over here in Solus Land with the GTX 1080 and the 3700X, it launches just fine. It stays at 60 at 2160, and the graphics. I mean, look at them; they're all hand drawn. They're all very nice, very good looking. It's but, so pretty. Yeah, they're, they're very simple and they work. And the controls, yeah, you click, or if you have a uh, touch screen, you can tap on screen to what if you have a make things happen. The fuck do you do then? <laughs> you tap on the screen. Well, yeah. Stab. <laughs> just you just stab make sure to like screen. preheat your. You gotta, you, gotta, you gotta stick your hooks in the oven first to make sure that they're warm, though. All right. But yeah, over here, it gets a clean bill of health. Okay, well, yeah. there you go. It'll, well, it'll, it'll run oh, no. on. There we go. <laughs> Ha, it'll yes. it'll run on whatever <laughs> stupid distro you're running. But did you have fun with it, Ven? I think I know what the answer is. Man, here's the real question. <laughs> Man, do you, do you want to get me excited? Yeah, give me a turn-based strategy. Give me like some hex grids and some RNGs. And I'm not going to be around by the time you get to give me. I'm going to be out somewhere else. Um, hey, man, my first thought with this 100% was I know it's not a mobile game because I checked. Uh, but only because, I mean, it's just not on mobile. I think this would translate very well to a tablet or, you know, a six inch plus device. Giggy, I'm not the only one. I checked in the forums. You're like, make this a mobile game because just the mechanic of like dragging would be very natural. Anyway, as you might know, I'm not a fan of turn based RNG. So it's time for me to break out the hater rate 100%. You know, my first thought after five minutes into the game, and I'm not slagging on this game in particular, was I need to go find something to do while I'm playing the game, which I did, 100%. Um, I watched an episode of The Boys, since this is turn-based, not requiring my full attention. This is the way I feel about these games, and you differ, I'm sure, but maybe you agree. 
What is it? You get dice at the start, you put them in weapon boxes, re-roll, bump the value, all the fun stuff you can do with. It's kind of neat, interesting in that part. And you put them in boxes. Uh, then you can upgrade your junk, giggity again, manage inventory space and all that. Take some different slots. Thought out, um, you get some RNG apples, you eat that business, it gives you some health business, and I'm trying to see how many times I can see business if you get figured that out yet. Uh, and equipment, it just randomly shows up on the map. You get treasure chests, they're usually behind baddies. Okay, this is all fun. When an enemy hits you, guess what? You lose points. Uh, if you lose more points than them, you die in a fire. Then, I kind of guessed it was going to happen, but the game's like, it's going to happen. You start the fuck all over again, because double fuck you, it's even got that in it. Um, <laughs> granted, the only games of this type that I genuinely have experience with are the ones that we've played on this show and thrown the glorious, glorious cannibalistic chairs at... But this one does seem to check all the boxes with the core mechanics to get all that right. Added bonus. It looks a bit of our right as well. I agree with Pedro. It's like, hey, man, I like, I like the style with this. Even the furry legged witch. No, that's not going to be a show title. Don't even think about it. However, Dicey Dungeon didn't do anything to change. My brain meets my opinion on turn based orange Jesus. It didn't. But don't listen to me. Because these next two dorks, man, they get off on this stuff. But yeah, that just one share with me, man. I kind of get up. I think it's a perfectly serviceable game if you're into it. But I'm just not. I don't get off on anything, man. Um, no, uh, I, re I, I really, I really enjoyed this one. Um, yeah, so it's a, it's a dice placement game. Uh, if you've ever played something like Lords of Waterdeep um, this is this is this is very similar. Where um, you need to you have like cards that respond to, and to uh, numbers on a dice pool that you roll. So you have to assign the dice to the cards. Sometimes it requires you to roll doubles. Sometimes you need to add a bunch of dice up together to get over a number. Sometimes you need to just roll under a specific number. It's actually quite astounding how much variety they have in the mechanics and how the various bits of equipment play with each other. There's some, there was some cool stuff, especially with like uh, one of the gunslinger bosses uh, at the end of the thief run, I believe. Um, but yeah, um, the uh, the game really attempts to like heavily push the luck skill ratio, um, just because uh, you know at at the beginning yes there's a lot of you're dependent sort of on making these good rolls, but after a while once you get a couple pieces of uh, equipment and upgrades, um, you can really start to strategize and like do some crazy combos with uh, some of the stuff. Like uh, I remember have I got my my dice stack up to like layer three filled up with the thief and it was pretty cool they didn't just convert them all into ones and stab a motherfucker to death eight times it was pretty nice um and yeah if if you um if you actually look at the ro the robots mechanics where you can roll any number of dice as long as it's under a specific target number that's pretty neat and all the various classes play fairly differently and you require you to adopt different strategies which i really really appreciate uh the short mission structure is also really good for squirrely people or like me or for people who just want to get a couple things done on a coffee break um so i yeah it it, it and it also really seems like it would make a very good, like, physical tabletop board game, which is also pretty cool, sort of like Armello. Um, I, I, I quite enjoyed it. I managed to uh, beat the first warrior level, the first thief level. The robot is fucking hard. Oh, my God. Just because, like, you really, you really got... It's really like playing blackjack. You really have to push your luck and count your cards and eat the fact that probability will probably bite you in the ass. But... It is what it is. This is what this sort of game is. Um, if you're into it, that if you're if you're if you're into RPGs, if you're into tabletop games, yeah. Uh, four chairs. Yep. And I uh, finished the uh, the first uh, episode with the warrior and finished the first episode with the robot. I with the thief. Well, you saw that run. That didn't end well. Uh, I also started with the inventor, which is the one you unlock after that. It's uh. The inventor is even crazier, and I think I can see exactly where they're going with this because it's just insane, and they keep adding new layers, and that's really interesting, especially when you look at the game itself, it's relatively simple. It's a deck builder where the dice rolls come from actual dice. Uh, the RNG is whatever you roll on the dice. Uh, your character is a dice, and you use other smaller die to attack, heal, and do the other uh, dungeon crawling mechanics. 
Uh, the the whole game show framing of it also very good. I enjoy that very much. Uh, if I had to make a suggestion, just a little, teeny tiny little nitpick that I didn't, you know, I felt kind of meh about is the dice itself. When you get them, you just get a value. It's like how about animating those dice rolls and actually giving us like a little thing. Just make it look pretty. I realize that this is a 2D game, so maybe animating that would be needlessly complex, but you do something, You just want please. to take full advantage of your 1080. <laughs> I just wanted something that's not just giving you the value. It would have been nice. In any case, I can safely say I did very much enjoy Dicey Dungeons, and I really wouldn't be opposed to having an Android version to play on my phone. Or chairs. Yeah, so there you go. It's it's fun if you're into roguelikes or tabletop games. If not, then you won't enjoy it. Yeah, man. Um, I'm really glad that both of you are into this genre because, you know, I like always got to walk into this. Like, this is going to be the one that's going to... And I don't put that expectation on it, but I'm like, hey, maybe this changed my mind. Maybe I'll get sucked into this. And I hate being like, you know, this one was like Hickory Dickory Don't Want. Um, Andrew Dice Dick Clay. Ah, made that joke. Uh, <laughs> but you guys know a lot more about this and the ins and outs and how it should be balanced and by all accounts it seems like a very solid game so Good yeah work. it I, is for, for me that's sort of like the same thing with racing games right where right like, i i have, I, have to, I have to defer to you guys because this is not my genre this i got i got to the other end thing yeah <laughs> i got to I the did, finish I, I did line the thing. i went the straight line for once <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so uh, that does it for us. Coming up next, we got Triple the Hate for Triple Your Displeasure. Hello. If you're watching this, chances are you've suffered something really traumatic in your life at some point. And somehow Son, you decided... If you're still watching this, you just got through like an hour and a half of trauma. What are you talking about? Yeah, so kudos to you, and Battle we're trauma. sorry, not really. But hey, if you'd like to let us know exactly how we uh, molested your insides, feel free to go on over to linuxgamecast.com. Mm -hmm. That's exactly the look I was going for there, Ben. <laughs> well, so, so, somehow we've gone so foul that we've been remonetized by YouTube. Surprise. <laughs> yeah, go to LinuxGameCast.com, hit the contact button. There's a form there you need to fill. Make sure you're sending your hate mail to LGC Weekly. And if you're a game developer, you'd like us to have a look at your game, you can do that. Just make sure to include three keys or a build that we can share amongst the three of us. Does that sound good? Just the three of us. Sounds good to me. Just the three <laughs> of us on your insides. We're like aliens, man. We burst out of your nipples. Yes, we're like uh, brain worms. Well, no, no. So, wait. <laughs> I, I would get one nipple, Pedro would get the other nipple, and then you get the belly button. How many I think nipples how do you have? Work. I have three, actually, we'll use so... You. Okay. We'll bring a friend. <laughs> but, well, I, I mean, you gotta be, bring a friend and a Jesus. Oh, that's the All right. <laughs> All right, for, first up is from Mr. Fox Cow, not Mr. Fox Dog. It's a different farm animal. Oh, hey, man, fight, for all. Fight. So, uh, we, um, he's, he's got a little shtick for each of us. Jordan, that's me. Congrats on all the fitness PRs. You should brag more about them in the future. Also, I appreciate when you talk about game performance for both your desktop and Steam box. Well, throw in the chairs, colon, thumbs up, colon. Pedro, I 100% agree with you on extraneous file directory creation in dollar See, home. you can tell in the hate mail where he started drinking. Um, yes, I thought I will not use any software that does this PSA for the dirty peasants. It's just a file or directory. Who cares? It's not a valid argument. Ven, you're breaking out the mute button more often. Keep up. Okay. <laughs> why, why, why would you send us this? This is painful. This hurts on, on the inside. Like, like eating a bunch of cheese curds and then plugging yourself. It's a Nine Inch nail song in reverse, baby. I curd myself today. I, I want to <laughs> feel you on the inside of your nipples. I'm always <laughs> leery of people agreeing with me. I, I don't know if it's because I've been doing this show for almost almost six years. See, this is this is why you two are going to have the mental traumas before I do. I don't think about <laughs> shit like that. <laughs> I just show up on Saturdays. I'm like, this is no, sorry, almost seven years. Yeah. <laughs> mm, ladies and gentlemen, then thus concludes our hate mail action. Um, do what Pedro said. Send us some notes. That's how we get in contact. Drop us a line on Patreon. 
or uh, YouTube comments after the fact, and Pedro will read them, and maybe I'll get around to reading them. Pedro, somebody wrote you back about something. Really? I missed that one. <laughs> no, I, I was shocked. I saw a bell for once, because I always click the bell. <laughs> Someone now. smashed the bell I don't bell click fan? the bell anymore. I just go to the comments and it's like, okay, you read the ball. Read <laughs> He's probably logging into YouTube. He, he, he right reads now, it in incognito, too, yeah, so right. that Google doesn't track that. <laughs> They can't know. They can never know. <clears throat> All right. You know what? On that bombshell. Let's do the music. You can always find us around uh, 8.30 Eastern Standard Moon Time. Ask Google. It'll tell you to go to hell. But then it might tell you when that is in your particular time zone area. Next week, we're going to be on Twitch. Um, we're already on Twitch right now. We're just going to be more on Twitch. More on that at 11. Allegedly, things might change. At Vin soon. Follow me on Twitter. That's where Linux Gamecast is, because we genuinely expected three people to ever watch the show, and I'm kind of stuck with it. At Vin on mass.linuxgamecast.com. Those are the two places. You can social media me. You can't really social media me. I'll read your stuff. I may not reply, but it gets ingested somehow through my mouth. You can follow me at the Burning Fool on Twitter or at Frojo on our mastodon mass.linuxgamecast.com. Yeah. I'll, I'll tell you when I'm live streaming. That's it. And I am Pedro Mateos. You can find me on Twitter. Just seriously, go on Twitter at unaccounted4. That's F O U R, because someone already taken the number four. And they haven't tweeted since like 2012, so fuck that guy. Somebody, Somebody's <laughs> pissed off at you because you get the letter four, motherfucker. I mean, I mean, I mean <laughs> there, there's, we, we, a, there, we, we, there's we, 11 year old Edgelord right now cursing your name. <laughs> I, I, I want to see if there's like a golf account unaccounted for F O R E. And accounted for. Ah. ah. <laughs> maybe, maybe, or, or maybe I'll just beat Pedro with the golf club. Who knows? Credits. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Look at all these wonderful people who are supporting this nonsense. After LGC Weekly scrolls away. Monsters of pure evil. <laughs> Fiscally irresponsible, glorious, yeah. high-functioning sociopaths, just like me. <laughs> like Arthurin, or Mr. Foxdog, or Hempty, or the Atomic... Get Frank, get out of here! Fuck off. No, no. <laughs> Atomic Ass, <laughs> McGee, Barbara, Elliot, Haplo, McGeek, Scoots, and the other producers who were going to scream in All no particular order, like Ludris! Or Jill and Steve for Steven Sildat. Ryan Vasquez. Master Dak. Earl. Damn it, you stole Master Dak from me, Pablo. Stony Fish. That sounds Macaroni. just like what Mike W would say. Christopher C. Shervik von Hovenstaven. <laughs> oh, dang. Isn't that Dirty right? Dean, Dundurt Cheap, Sorceress. J Girl. Now we can get the fuck out of Look at those guys. Frank, Frank get your ass out here. Capital. Now we can get Frank back. I Frank, what come it, back. What would it know? You scared him off, man. <laughs> oh, there he is. <laughs> you think <laughs> I care about your feelings, Frank? Get your shy ass up here, Frank. Yeah. Come on, Frank. Yeah, show it to me, baby. Yeah. Mm, Scroll mm, at the same mm. rate as the Go credits. Slow. Come on. Go slow. Go slow. <laughs> low and slow, baby. Uh, low and slow. Yeah. <laughs> Too quick, Frank. Pistol. Too quick. Well, oh, bye that's bye. harsh. <laughs> bye bye. Bye, Frank. <laughs> Dying five. Peace. Five dudes. <laughs> <laughs>